Welcome back. Now, the spring bots are set to showcase their robotic skills and in international robotics at the upcoming first global challenge taking place in Singapore. The nonprofit organization aims to boost youth participation in global science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Over 160 countries will gather to build robots while raising awareness about global problems and technological developments. For more on this, I'm joined by Springbots Public Relations Officer Roxanne Reddy and mentor Jared Jalil Reddy as well. Good evening to the both of you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Newsnight. And thank you for also bringing in some of your robotics. It's very exciting. But let's start by talking about, Roxanne, the Springbots and what this is all about. So thank you so much for having us here this evening. The Springbots is a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that aims at upskilling the youth on STEM education, as you mentioned. The Springbots was actually formed uh, after my eldest son, Mikhail, went to Washington, D.C. in 2017. Mm -hmm. And he competed in the inaugural first global competition. He came back with a passion to upskill the youth on robotics and to spread what he had learned with students that don't get exposure to this. Mm -hmm. So since then, um, we took it upon ourselves to form a nonprofit and to spread this knowledge to, to the youth that, that don't get exposed to it. Up until now, robotics has been um, a sport for kids that attend private schools. And kids that don't, they actually, they don't know about robotics and they're not exposed to it. Mm -hmm. So let's expand, I don't know, Jared, if you can uh, talk as well on the actual challenge and, and what the robotics competition and challenge is all about. How, how does it work? So every year we have a robotics competition called FGC. Yeah. FGC is first global competition, that's what it stands for. And every year we focus on a new challenge from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And these challenges basically are the main challenges that we face in today's society. Mm. And this year we're focusing on hydrogen horizons. Yes. As we know, energy is something that is very scarce and something that is heavily, heavily used in all industries in our country and globally. So this year we're focusing on looking for a new sustainable fuel, which is hydrogen. And our robot will simulate simulate um, separating hydrogen and oxygen atoms. As we know, hydrogen is something that is very um, abundant, as though we have oceans and we have lakes and we have dams. So this year we'll be focusing on using hydrogen and um, using that to power different energy sources such as cars, um, oh, wow. such as we can help ESCOM with um, load shedding. And we really do believe that hydrogen is the next fuel that we're going to use in the future. And this competition is not a competition that's mainly focused on winning. This competition is something about competition, and competition is the word that the first organization actually made because yes we are competing with 190 countries across the world but we're doing it with the common goal to benefit the benefit the country benefit all the countries in the world and we really do think that this year we are going to do well in the competition yeah. and um, work well with the other countries so exciting so these are two of the robots that you've brought in yes. tonight talk yes. us through what is happening here because yes. i have no idea so <laughs> let's just start off with our main prize this is our madiba robot okay so in 2018 we took this robot to mexico city and we finished fifth in the world and it was a very big achievement for us because out of 170 countries we finished fifth. amazing and um walt disney the uh, representatives from walt disney were so amazed with our robot that they actually created an award called the walt disney award for imagination and creativity and this award was awarded to us and we actually won the gold medal for this award because they were so amazed with our robot okay. and um, yes so this is our Madiba robot and the robot that we see um, on the floor is the robot that the team will be taking to Mexico City this I is mean the new to one. Singapore yes okay this great. is the new one the one that we made this year and um, the, the team made it under the guidance of myself and my brothers who are actually mentors in the team yes and yes so this is the one we'll be taking to Singapore okay so wh what does it do does this one separate the, the atoms as you yes as you mentioned earlier? yes so I can actually give you a demonstration because I'm, ex I'm so excited to understand more and to see how it actually functions so we just started up here so yes so it drives normally like any other robot yeah and um, the driving part is very key because it displays all the aspects of the robot and then with regards to separating the molecules so we'll power up that device in front 
and then as we're driving, we, we, we're basically driving in water, and okay. we'll be picking up the molecules during the competition. And then once we have enough molecules in the robot, we then power that down and then lift this up, because we'll then have to deposit it into different stations. And then that's how we'll be separating the hydrogen and the oxygen, because the hydrogen will be collected inside the robot. Oh my gosh, yes, how, how long and how much studying and, and how, how, what goes into creating something like this and to make sure that the mechanism works correctly and that it functions as you would like it to function? Because on such a big stage, you don't want anything to go wrong, right? Yes, so talk to us about what goes into the planning, the preparation, and the skills involved in creating something like this. Yes, ma'am. So as we know, the Spring Moss was created in 2018, and it's been a five-year journey for us to gather the knowledge to, in order to build a robot like this. Mm -hmm. But the kids that we get in our robotics team are from underprivileged communities, and yeah. they know nothing about robotics. So we teach them like my brothers and I, as the mentors in the team, we teach them robots, we, we teach them STEM education, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, yeah. AI, 3D printing, and using that knowledge and that information, we are capable of building a robot with kids that don't know anything about robotics within six weeks, and yeah. it's a really amazing achievement that these kids are capable of doing this. It's, it's so exciting, because I can really see your love and your passion for this, so yes, thank you very much for the work that both of you are doing. Roxanne, coming back to you, let's talk about the interest um, that these young children have uh, in STEM. Um, are you seeing that there's an interest? Are we needing to give them a bit of a push? What has been the interaction so far? So I think there's definitely an interest in STEM. A lot of the kids that join, they want to be engineers, they want to be pilots, they want to be astronauts. Yeah. But even in saying that, um, robotics doesn't discriminate. You may not be um, a STEM enthusiast, but you may be a marketer. You may be able to fundraise. We don't turn kids away. So mm -hmm. if you have a skill that you can add and you can benefit the team with, you can join in robotics. But definitely, these kids need, need a push. Um, we have been on a drive for the past five years to push STEM education and I yeah. think we've come really far. We know that AI and coding has been uh, introduced into our government schools from foundation phase. Mm -hmm. So we've actually come a long way, but definitely there's still, there's still a gap yeah. and we see that robotics is something that many private schools offer. And definitely, we still need to push STEM education. Mm. For but thank you for the work that you are doing in introducing it to children who wouldn't necessarily have that opportunity. So when do you guys leave quickly? And how do we support? How do we make sure that you guys have all of our support? So we leave to Singapore on the 4th of October. We return on the 12th. Mm -hmm. And you can support us via all the social media platforms. We have an Instagram page. It's Springbot South Africa. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook page, also Springbot South Africa. And um, Twitter, or X as X. we now. Yes. call it it's Springbots <laughs> SA so Amazing. please show us your love and your support on there and we hope we know our team's going to do you proud well we wish you all of the best and thank you for sharing all of your insights and information with us thank you so much to both you Roxanne and you Jared as well thank and I you. wish you guys all of the best make us proud thank, thank you, you so much <laughs> my yeah. absolute pleasure well that was the Springbots public relations officer Roxanne Reddy and the mentor Jared Jalil Reddy as well